Hey guys, it's Whitley Terriel here. I am the founder of Skypeable, a safe and supportive community for women who want to grow personally, professionally, and profitably. And this evening, we are here to uh, on our Skypeable talk on how to live a happier life with our um, with Laura McPhee, happiness coach and healer. And she's here tonight with us to share um, some wonderful tips and some different insights on how we can actually live a happier life. So I am actually just going to go on to our Skype page and I'm going to share this into the group with the rest of our wonderful women here. And just give me a second. So I was actually, I went on to the Facebook group earlier today and I asked people um, what was one thing that they were, that makes them happy. And I had so many amazing responses. We had people saying it was their kids that made them happy to a cup of morning coffee, um, to the bright, you know, sun and the nice warm weather because here in, in uh, St. John, we've, we obviously we get snow and it's been uh we have our winter going on, so it feels like an early spring out there, which is making lots of folks happy. All right, so here we are. We're going to bring this on over to our Skypeable group. If you are someone who hasn't actually gone into the Skypeable group and you're uh, watching from our page, um, feel free to join our Skypeable network community. Um, this is where a lot of our women, uh, female entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs connect and we support one another, share resources and tips. All right, and we're gonna share this in here. And I'm gonna bring Laura out here in just a few moments. I'm just going to let Facebook send this out into the social media network to share with others, give people a chance to jump on. So this is our first time actually, I think in a while doing a Skype talk in the evening. So it'll be interesting to see how many people actually are able to join as opposed to our morning talks. All right. So, um, so today in uh, tonight's Skype will talk, we're going to be covering uh, self-care. We're also going to be covering uh, about having an attitude of gratitude, which is amazing. And our last thing that we're going to cover is how we can actually reprogram our subconscious mind. So all really, really interesting things and all great right things to help us live a happier life. Um, now, I wanted to actually ask you guys right now, um, what's, how do you define happiness? because happiness can be completely uh, defined in so many different ways, right? So if you're tuning in right now and you're watching, I would like for you to leave in the comments how you define happiness. All right, so we're just gonna get started here. If you guys are jumping on, please hey, say hello. Drop a, a little hi in the comments. Let me know that you're here. <laughs> and we will get things started. All right, so I'm gonna bring Laura on and she's gonna introduce herself and then we're gonna kick this talk off and get all kinds of great yummy, yummy value. All right, so without further ado, let's bring on Laura. Hey, Laura. Hey, Thanks how are so you? much for being here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be a part of the community and to spread this more like fully to you guys, this wonderful message that we're gonna talk about this evening. Awesome. I'm a happiness coach and healer, and I love to empower women to get to their dream happy lives. So I essentially combine life coaching with theta healing and energy healing modality so that people can actually let go of the stress and worry and overwhelm the baggage, all the junk that's been like keeping them back and just holding them, keeping them small, keeping them trapped or in any kind of suffering in their life. We clear that away so that they can move forward to their dream happy lives where they're happy and healthy and fulfilled and super abundant and full of joy. And I typically deal with people pleasers and perfectionists and workaholics, people who are caregivers who tend to self-sacrifice and put everyone else first. So I love to spread that message, especially to women of self-love and self-care because it's not selfish for us to take care of ourselves. In fact, it's the most loving thing we can do because the bigger and brighter we shine and the more full we are, the more full our cup is, the better we're able to serve everyone else in our life. So it's so loving to do. I love it. Thank you so much, Laura. I'm so excited to hear some of your input and uh, your tips that you're going to share with us tonight. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, so self-care, that's huge. It's it's so huge. And with women, I find that we tend to kind of put ourselves on the back burner because we're such, you know, naturally we want to take care of others and, you know, we do so many things. So um, tell us a little bit more about self-care and how we can implement that in our day-to-day -day lives so that we're taking care of ourselves and we're filling up our cups. Awesome. So there's so many different ways that you can add self-care. And I like to really get the point across that's important to have something that you're looking forward to. It's something that's actually going to fill yourself up instead of something that's like on a to-do list that you just like need to check off because it's like, oh, I have to do a minute of meditation in the morning and I have to like read a personal development <laughs> book so that I'm taking care of myself. That's not great self-care. You want self-care to be joyful and happy and a wonderful expression of yourself. So you can find things that really light you up and that you're joyful and passionate about. So that can be anything from going to yoga, doing meditation if you truly do like it, um, exercise, having different girls nights, taking time for yourself. So tuning into kind of live broadcasts like this that fill your cup up, that make you grow and expand and learn new things. It's really important to do that. And then on the flip side, it's also important to know that in the building of these habits, it can be a little bit hard. So just because it's not easy and joyful at the beginning and there's a little bit of extra effort that you have to do just to get started and build healthy habits into your life, it's so important because a lot of people will do what's easy in the short term and it creates a lot of pain in the long term. So if you're not eating healthy or getting enough exercise or drinking water or doing all these things that nourish and fuel your body, if you're not getting enough sleep at night, all these things over time will hurt you and will create disease in your body or cancer and all these different things later in life. So it's a lot more important to kind of see that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So if you find that you're just taking one baby step at a time to build a new healthy habit into your life, a new self-care ritual into your life. So like getting up early. I know that Whitley likes to get up super early in the morning and fill herself up and do those things. So even though it might seem at the beginning a little bit harder and you might need a little bit of extra motivation to do it and just like push yourself through it, that little bit of extra effort in the short term will pay off dividends throughout your entire life because you're going to form these wonderful self-care rituals into your life so that it's embedded in you. Just like a lot of people can find it so easy to like wake up in the morning and hit snooze 20 times, it can be just as easy to eventually build that habit into your life where you get up and just jump up energized and you're like, I'm going to go do yoga. I'm going to go fill myself up, do like 20 minutes of meditation, drink a smoothie, drink my water, drink uh, all kinds of awesome things. You can drink organic smoothies and juices or you could put like lemon in your tea to kind of have hot lemon water to detox your body in the morning. There's all kinds of different things you can do to fill yourself up in the morning, to fill yourself up throughout the day. So I love mm -hmm. to do like quick dance breaks or like listen to your favorite music or watch something funny or have something that like really lifts you up so that you're filled with self-care throughout the day as well. And then an evening ritual. A lot of people find that they don't want to do it at night. So a little really cool tip for that is to do it a couple hours before bedtime so that you're not exhausted and putting off your bedtime because you don't want to do your evening ritual because you're just too tired to do it. So like removing our makeup, washing our faces, putting moisturizer on ourselves and like actually enjoying it, like being like, I really love how soft my skin is, like taking time to connect with your body and feel your body. All those kind of things help to support your self-care and bring more happiness into your life because the more little baby steps you do, the brighter and brighter you'll shine and the better you'll feel about your entire life. So there's, I could talk about self care for forever. <laughs> so it's really about, it's really about bringing, um, just pretty much living present, like being present in every single moment and enjoying yeah. it and mm -hmm. taking the time to, you know, to feel your, fuel yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, I love that. So um, anyone who's watching right now, I know we have a couple of viewers. Um, mm -hmm. what are, I would love to hear what some of you are practicing now for self-care. What are some of the things that you guys do um, that help you with self-care? I want to hear them. Um, for me personally, uh, I love baths. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. They're amazing. <laughs> Um, so for me, self-care would be, you know, first thing in the morning I get up and I, you know, I'm a spiritual person. So mm -hmm. I get up and, you know, I, I practice the, the gratitude and I meditate, um, and I pray and that really kicks off my morning. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I really, really enjoy having a nice, warm, hot bath. Oh, okay. So we got, uh, Sherry Brown. She says, um, coffee and baths. 
very yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, um, Laura, the, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was attitude of gratitude. I know you're huge on this. I yeah. see you promote this all the time on, on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to me a little bit about how this has an impact on our lives? Yes. And it's so tied to what we're creating into our realities because a lot of people can just walk around and think of all the things that we don't have or comparing ourselves or judging ourselves instead of actually taking that time to be so grateful and so joyful of all the wonderful things that are happening and showing up in our lives. So it's just reframing things and like changing the pathway in your head to create good stories about things. So that's kind of how I started getting into an attitude of gratitude because I wanted to really attract more of that amazing stuff to me. And it totally worked. Like I started doing this when I was still at a corporate job and was not enjoying life. I was definitely nearing my breaking point and I'm like, what's gonna help me here? So I started doing a gratitude practice and literally whenever I'd walk to or from the market, I'm from St. John originally, so from my <laughs> office to the market or to my house, I was also living uptown, for like about a 10 minute walk, I would just say things that I'm grateful for. So I'd be like, I'm grateful I have all 10 fingers. I'm grateful I have all 10 toes. I'd be grateful for everything within my body because there's so many things that we can be grateful for. And a lot of people take it for granted. So that starts to like bring more of that attitude into your mindset. So then you're able to see more of those silver linings of things. So even if something bad happens, you're like, okay, what's this teaching me? Maybe I'm learning patience. Maybe I'm learning this or that from it. So you can be grateful for those things. And then you can just expand that into your friends and your family and your clients and your community because there's so many things that are just incredible and blessings and we take a lot of it for granted. And a lot of people are in that like lack or stuck or mindset where like there's not enough, like there's not enough time, there's not enough mo money, there's not enough all these things, I don't have enough energy. So instead of saying those stories and by repeating those stories over and over, they become self-fulfilling prophecies. So instead of doing that, if you focus on the good things and the things that you're grateful for, so like we're never worried about our next breath. There's always an abundance of oxygen. So being grateful for that and any kind of water, if you turn on a tap, there's an abundance of water. There's an abundance of healthcare in Canada because we're so fortunate. So to focus on all the things that were abundant, more abundant things will come into our lives. And it's really just incredible to watch it happen in your life over and over. So if you want to build a gratitude practice into your life, I really recommend doing three a day for at least 21 days so that it becomes a habit. So you can journal it, you can just think it out loud. And I've kind of incorporated it into my self-care rituals at night so that by the end of the day, I'm saying things that I'm truly grateful for and having a gratitude attitude at the evening where I'm just so grateful for everything and kind of like go into la la land with that because it just keeps your body in a better energy and you attract more and more great things by having that attitude. I can 100% agree with you on that, Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, I started doing this almost, I think it'll almost be a year that I started yes. actually gratitude. And mm -hmm. that's one of my, I guess, morning rituals that I do in the morning is I have a journal and I write down 10 things that I'm grateful for that day. And mm -hmm. honestly, it it's like what you focus on expands and yes. so it's like the more positive things that you focus on the more positive comes back to you and i know mm -hmm. sherry <laughs> sherry brown if she's watching she can 100 percent agree because we have to conversations about this stuff all the time mm -hmm. um but yeah it's 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 practicing gratitude and being grateful because when you have those bad days or you know you feel like things are kind of falling apart you can actually take yourself you know step back and think well, I, I have so many things to be blessed for. So you're right. And it does, it, it does, it does work. So if you're someone who thinks, oh, I can never ever create that habit of doing it. I used to be that person who used to procrastinate and used to be horrible at creating good <laughs> habits. But I'm telling you, it, it works. If you, if you can sit down and you can kind of do that, even what Laura said, that 21 day challenge, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, so I wanted to kind of go down through the comments because I had a couple of uh, girls comment here. So awesome. Tiffany Agnew, she said, uh, so for her self care, she does the gym, bubble baths, meditation and journaling. Very nice. Wonderful. Yeah. And then we have Sharon Reed. Uh, Sharon Reed said, great idea. Um, Aaron Eagles, she says, completely agree. And Sherry Brown says, yes, girl. All <laughs> right. So, <Awesome. laughs> um, if, um, so for you girls that are watching right now, um, I'd like to know what's one thing that you're grateful for today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I guess um, I'm grateful for being able to 
to jump on this live conversation with you, Laura, and be able to get some uh, really good insight from you because this is something that you do every single day and you work with people on living happier lives. So mm-hmm. I'm ready for this. Awesome. <laughs> I'm super grateful to be here too. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so next question that I had mm-hmm. um, was going into the reprogramming of your subconscious mind. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? Mm-hmm. I do a lot of that with theta healing. So essentially, if you're not familiar with theta healing, it involves your theta brainwave. So every night when you go to bed, you enter your theta brainwave, just like all the other different brainwaves. And it's directly linked to your subconscious mind. So a lot of people aren't really aware of how our whole mind works. And that 5% is our conscious mind. So where we're wanting our happy, healthy, fulfilling, abundant, joyful, financially free life, that's 5%. So it's like the tip of the iceberg, whereas the other 95% is just beneath the surface. And it's our subconscious mind. And that's essentially been formed throughout our entire lives. And it's been influenced since we were a child by our friends and family and teachers and parents and society and TV. So unfortunately, there's some negative beliefs in there that aren't serving us anymore of fear and self-sacrifice and self-sabotage and doubts and worries and stress and lack mentalities. And there's so many things that hold women back in particular, and we keep ourselves so small and we're disempowered. So if you see that there's a gap between where you're at and where you want to be, it's likely it's because of a limiting belief. So the subconscious is just trying to keep you safe, trying to keep you alive. So it's working. It's done an amazing job. You're alive. (laughs) doesn't care if you're happy or healthy or fulfilled or anything else. So we want to take a look into your subconscious and a great way that you can tap into your subconscious is through muscle testing. So I'll share that with you guys too. Oh, so you can actually see and like be in touch with that intuition. Cause in this busy world where there's just so much going on, we tend to not be able to hear that like little inner nudge. So muscle testing is a great tool for people to use. And there's a bunch of different ways to muscle test. Sometimes people know the way where like, if they've ever been tested for allergies, you can like get some else to kind of do it with your own arm. But if you want to do it yourself, you can stand or you can use your fingers. So I'll explain the finger way. And it's really easy and really cool because your muscles actually know if you're saying a true statement to yourself or a false statement. And if you're saying a false statement to yourself, if you're lying, your muscles get a little bit weaker, which allows your fingers to break. So you're kind of like everyone join in. I know it's a little bit weird, but we're all at home and there's no one watching us. (laughs) So if you want to hold your fingers together as if you had like a $20 bill that you don't want to blow away in the wind. So like it's enough pressure where it's like it's holding something but it's not like a workout where you're going to like cut off your blood supply. It's just like enough. So it's awesome because you can use your other fingers as like your pliers. So you can just have those and it'll pull it apart and you're going to hold these $20 bill fingers the same each time. So just sometimes people are in their head about it and like, Oh, what am I doing? The same thing. Just let it go. We can breathe. If you're like, Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. But if I say a true statement, so my name is Laura, it stays strong. And if Uh I say a false statement, my name's Jack it breaks. So if everyone wants to try that, everyone can say, my name is. All right, girls, get in on this. I'm doing this too. (laughs) It's really interesting. People are like shocked by what's happening. (laughs) All right. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So if you want to say, my name is Whitley and pull. Okay. My name is Whitley. And then do I try to pull? Yep. So, and then it'll stay. Okay. And then let go. You can like pull these ones out. And then say, my name is Jack, and then pull. My name is Jack. So see how that kind of felt different? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Whoever's watching this, I'm hoping that you guys are trying this at home because I I actually, it did work, and Mm -hmm. I don't want you guys thinking I'm crazy. So (laughs) (laughs) It's really fascinating, and I love to empower people with that tool so that they don't ever feel like they're hooked on a healer or need to be codependent or dependent on someone else to get in touch with that intuition. Because as I've been going on this journey for my life, I'm able to, like, see more and more things that – I don't always need to muscle test with my fingers anymore. Sometimes it's like, as I'm saying it, I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. Like this is a limiting belief that's coming up and I need to clear this now because it's holding me back in my life or my happiness or my business. So it's right. really cool to have that. Cause if you're in like a health food store or a bookstore, you can be like, this is the next best product for my healing journey. Or if like the universe is triggering you with all these different situations and like three things have happened in a row and you're like, Oh my God, like what's happening in my life right now. You can be like, I'm judging that within myself. Yes. 
that's the next thing for me to heal on my healing journey. Yes. And then you get that kind of intuition and extra support to be like, okay, this is why things are happening. And you can kind of piece things together so you can heal quicker and easier without having to struggle and sacrifice like a lot of people have tended to do. That is so cool. That is so yeah. cool. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is <laughs> exciting. Um, yeah. Okay. Comment yes if you guys tried that. Okay. I want to know who yeah. actually tried it. Comment yes. Awesome. Okay. And then uh, we can get into some of the theta healing downloads too. <laughs> okay. Let's see if uh, anyone tried this. I see a whole couple of women who commented on what they're grateful for. Erin Eagle says, oh my gosh. Did you try it, Erin? <laughs> <laughs> and then Sharon Reese said, did work. Oh, it did work. Okay. So then uh, Amanda says, okay, I said my name is Jack two seconds before you, Laura. This was weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes. And yes, so we got a couple of girls. Okay. So thank you for trying that, ladies. Awesome. Um, we love your participation. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay. So on a scale of one to 10, uh, how cool did you think that was? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, was that was a 10 for me. Awesome. <laughs> Super cool. So you're saying, Laura, that we can use that in like when we're trying to like make decisions and trying. There's kind of a double edged sword for that because sometimes people will kind of give all their power to their muscle test, but that's tuning into your subconscious. So your subconscious could be really terrified to move forward in a business and a relationship and all these different things and fear and doubt and negative energy could be holding you back. And you're like, Oh yeah, that's like a terrible mood for me. I'm definitely not going to grow or expand in this way. And then they'll kind of blame it on that. So your subconscious mm -hmm. tends to like your comfort zone and everything inside of it. So if you're growing outside of it, you can muscle test. The only thing preventing me back is fear of failure. Yeah. The thing that's holding me back is my self doubt. Yeah. So that'll kind of give you those kind of intuitive hits. And I highly recommend finding a theta healer or someone who can like go deeper into kind of your stories and excuses that you're saying around things so that you can kind of clear the stuff around it. And we'll do a little bit of energy healing tonight on it um, because sometimes People unfortunately do that and they give all their power to their subconscious. We're using this as a tool to see what our subconscious is thinking and feeling. So sometimes it knows really well what we need. Like when we're really in tune with ourselves, we're like, yeah, like that's a hell yes. I'm going to go forward in this. I need this like course or product or program or need a natural path to help me heal in these ways. And we can kind of feel when our body's like hell yes, but sometimes that intuitiveness is kind of muted or muffled down by fears. So we want to see which fears are holding us back and you can kind of see more insight into it that way. Very, very cool, Laura. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know that we were kind of running out of time. These half hour mm -hmm. talks, they go so fast. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right now I'm going to open it up for people, for anyone who has any questions for Laura right now. Um, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments and uh, we'll display them so that Laura can answer them for you. Awesome. Um, in the meantime, uh, just to do like a quick recap of everything that we kind of discussed in terms of the self-care, the attitude of gratitude and the reprogramming your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe can you just give a quick recap on that, Laura, on uh, yeah. for us? So self-care should feel like something that's actually filling yourself up. So the things that make you happy and joyful, if you want to like look back into your childhood, even of things that you might have had as hobbies that you just stopped doing because you were told, though you can't make a living out of it, do mm -hmm. those things, incorporate like painting and coloring and things that give you like joy into your life and also do the things that you know will be good for you long term. So having more water, drinking good things, smoothies, letting go of some of that coffee if you're like up to multiple cups a day. So different things that you know are healthy for you to add those things into your life and just do baby steps so that it's really comfortable and easy. And then having an attitude of gratitude is amazing because it not only helps you be happier in the moment and being more present and joyful in what blessings you have in your life, it also helps you to attract more of that into your life because what you were saying essentially is that everything that we give attention to, everything that we focus on expands. So where mm -hmm. your attention goes, energy flows, and it's a universal, universal principle. So having that attitude of gratitude and remembering to do that is so important in your life. And then reprogramming your mind, you can do that through theta healing. So theta healing is really just a way to tap into your subconscious. The muscle testing allows you to have a tool to see what your subconscious is thinking and feeling. And then with theta healing, we can give you downloads to change beliefs. So you can muscle test, I love myself, I hate myself. 
like different things like that. And then we can do downloads to change that. And I love to do that on my personal channel. So I know that we didn't have a ton of time because we got so like excited about talking about all the other wonderful things. So if you guys want to check out my page, I also give Theta Healing Beyonders on there too. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, um, I guess like our time is like just about running out. So before we leave, um, I wanted to actually uh, give the opportunity for Laura to share out her um, her website as well as her contact information. So if any of you ladies have any questions for Laura, you can actually get in contact with her. And yeah. I know that Laura actually has something coming up that she mm -hmm. wanted to share. Um, Laura, would you share that with them? Yes, definitely. So my website is coachlauramcfee.com. And then I'll put that in the links because I know that's super easy to, and convenient for people to click on versus like typing things in. I also have my personal Facebook profile. So feel free to add me as a friend on there. I go live on the Love and Light show on Monday. So be sure to catch those. And I have a business page that's Laura McPhee as well. And next Monday, I'm actually going to do a free webinar on how to live your happiest life. So it's going to go even more in depth into some of the stuff that we were talking about today. It'll be about self-love, self-care, having an attitude of gratitude having healthy boundaries and speaking openly and assertively, assertively to the people in your life. So it'll show you those kind of five steps that I've incorporated into my life to increase my happiness and that I'm working with my clients to do as well so they can build those healthy habits into their life. It's completely free. I wanted to give more value to my community and show people how they can just be happier because hurt people are hurting people. Like the state of the world, the state of the environment, things aren't going so well. So it's up to us to choose to be that light for us to step up and take care of ourselves with self-care, with having anything that you need that you're feeling called to do to move you forward so that you're happy and you're that light so that you can show up and have a full cup to give more to your family, your coworkers, your community, so we can just raise the vibration of the planet. So definitely join next Monday. It's at seven at night. And I'll also put that link uh, to register so you'll get the link, the Zoom meeting, all that stuff so that you can easily hop on. And another thing that I'm doing with the wonderful Creator of Cocktails is this beautiful cosmic chakra painting. I don't know if you guys can see all the details, but we're doing <laughs> that again back by popular demand on March 16th. So that's a Friday night at seven. So I'm super excited to do more spiritual paint nights and other things to just lift the vibration of everyone up. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. This was amazing. I am very excited to sign up for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I've had so much fun. Oh, it was a pleasure. And thank you. Um, and thank you everyone for tuning in and um, in participating in the Skype talk this evening. Um, and thanks again, Laura. Um, and I will say goodbye for now until next time. Bye, Bye guys.